What's the word, y'all? Ignore the fact that I am rocking a uh, Felicio jersey in 2021. Uh, we did a live stream earlier of the NBA draft, and this was supposed to be my good luck charm, and we still lost a pick, so I should probably burn it. Uh, today, I, I, I didn't necessarily plan on coming out here and doing a call game episode for one actual game, but here we are. It was uh, it was a really good one. But the only thing is, this is a this is a real statistic, and 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 we'll talk about the actual game. This game took forever. The last, hold on, what I just said, the last two minutes of regulation was 33 real minutes, which means that this entire fourth quarter at the minimum was 45 minutes long at the absolute minimum. That don't even count the, they don't even count the commercials. Every play in the last two minutes got reviewed, and that is the biggest downside of the NBA. Like, like I was on JJ Reddick's podcast, and he was asking me as a fan if there's anything you can change as a fan, and the first thing that came to mind was we got to do something about the review thing because it takes too damn long. All the momentum of this game, as good as the way it ended, could have been killed with the fact that we had to wait 33 minutes for the last two. Ridiculous, but let's talk about the actual game. Um, what a finish! What a finish! We, of course, we in the party. It's me, Mike, Derek, Pierre. We got Reese in here. We got a whole plethora of people. It's basically like we be doing a little kickback. Like instead of us being at home watching it together, we're over over Xbox. And boy, did we just have a lot of fun with this one. Y'all know, I, I'm not an anti-Paul George guy by any means. I really do like Paul George. But I do love a very good meme. So, unfortunately, jo Paul George is about to be memed up to death. It was It's kind of unfortunate for his sake because for the most part, this whole playoffs, he's been stellar. But him going to that free throw line after a very... I, I thought it was a bad turn play. Like, um, if you didn't know what happened... Um, Devin Booker's driving on the right side of the basket or driving right side of the, the court. Patrick Beverly gets his hand in the cookie jar, boom, pokes it out of bounds. They review it. Takes 10 minutes. Legitimately takes a very long time to review this one. And they overturn the call. And if you go on Twitter, every, I ain't see a single person that was like, good call. Everybody's like, what a call. This is stupid. This is stupid. And what the Clippers go down, they just need to make some free throws and they win the game. They give it to Paul George. Let me see. What is what is Paul? First of all, the Clippers, they say it every single game. The Clippers are the best free throw shooting team in NBA history as a team. Best free throw shooting team in NBA history. This, this year, he shot... 87% from the free throw line. For his career, he's an 85% free throw shooter. 85% free throw shooter. And he had already missed three going into the line. And I was just joking with my boy Pierre because Pierre is the biggest Paul George fan on the planet, it seems like. I was like, oh, he already missed three. He going to miss two more. He like, bro, he not missing two. And then he did. So I'm, I'm always down for a good meme. I, I just don't like when it crossed the line and it started getting into personal lives and, you know, things like that. But, hey, if you want to call him Pandemic P, do you think I'm, I can't wait to get done filming this video and I just go through Twitter and see what viral tweets come up with this because two missed free throws especially right here like that is the definition of a ball don't lie thing a questionable turn of events like I legitimately thought there was no way they overturned that even though it did look like it was off of Booker's hand for me it didn't look conclusive enough for them to switch the call. And that's always what they say when it comes to where well, they're reviewing this and they won't change it unless it's 100% certainty unless, like it's like you're on trial for murder. Like, unless we have bona fide evidence, 100%, we're not overturning the call. And that felt like one of those plays that wouldn't be overturned, but it was. And then Paul George comes down and misses those free throws, and I'm like, no way he did this. And I made the joke, the man Paul George is going to go to the free throw line and do the Wiggins. I make the same joke every time, but I honestly think it's funny. And he did it. He did the Wiggins. He missed two free throws. And, and the overall, not a terrible game. He didn't shoot the ball very well. But for the most part, he was all right until we get down to that final moment. The fact that the, the Suns were able to win this game when Devin Booker shot 5 for 16, um, broke his nose, and also committed 7 turnovers. This was one of Devin Booker's worst games of the season. Bar, bar none, this is one of Devin Booker's worst games of the NBA season. And they won behind freaking Cameron Payne at putting up 29, which I think is his career high. I would guess his career high. I know he didn't drop 29 in Chicago behind him. And, of course, DeAndre Aiden dominating. Again, you go back to that draft class, and I know you you like Luka, you like Trey Young, but you can't be mad at the fact that you have DeAndre Aiden because he is showcasing that this man will probably be a 10-time All-Star in his career or something. Like, he is that nice of a player, and when it matters the most, he was there. He got hands. He out-jumped Zubac. Zubac? Zubac which don't seem like that takes much, but he did it. 
the bro, I, I can't I can't tell you how happy I was when they threw that pass up, because I think. Everybody in our party, we like, yeah, they're going to throw it at the basket. It's point nine, so technically, there is a chance for you to get the ball, catch, and shoot, right? So that's that's why Tyron Lue doesn't tell his team exactly they're throwing it at the basket because you still have time for Book to get a ball up because he's got a, very, very, uh, a fairly quick release. So it is time for him to catch and shoot. But I think everybody in our party is like, they're going to throw it up, and they did. And the fact it seemed like they, they weren't prepared for it at all. Like, like, like I said, there is a chance that Devin Booker catch that ball and he shoots it, and that's probably what you're more concerned with at the end of the day. But you have to at least tell Zubac, be on the lookout for that roll. Be on the lookout for that roll. And then they got double big, one to guard the defender. Um, Boogie, did you did you do anything? <laughs> Boogie didn't jump. He ain't we like, hey, hey. Did Boogie play other than he played three total minutes. Um, he fouled twice and he had a turnover, and then he had the last point nine seconds where he didn't do anything. Um, wow. I always want to call it the Tyson Chandler, because if I'm not mistaken, let me let me see, let me see. I think I tweeted the Tyson Chandler. Ty, this is <laughs> this is how you know that we, this is how you know I don't be preparing for not a thing. Uh, Tyson Chandler tip in, because if I'm not mistaken, Tyson Chandler did this exact same thing, and this is when I found out that it wasn't against the rules to throw it at the basket and let somebody else go in and get it. And maybe it wasn't Tyson Chandler. Because now that I Googled it, nothing came up. Some really big center that I like <laughs> did this recently in the last five or six years. And then it was a little controversy. They were like, oh, is this even legal? Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was legal. And I saw even Clippers players on the court like, no, 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 no. There's no rule. That ball could have been going in the basket. It could have been over the cylinder, under the cylinder. It doesn't matter. It's not a goal ten. It's not a basket interference because that's just the way the rules are. Monty Williams coached a heck of a game again. A heck of a game again. To draw up that final play is beautiful. Give it to the guy that's been dominating all day. All series. But Pierre said something which is 100% true. The best team in basketball is the 0-2 Clippers. So as crazy of a loss this has been, and the fact that you are down 0-2, the 0-2 Clippers have been the best team in basketball. So we shall see. They head over to LA. Staples Center is back to 100% capacity. It will be rocking. And I know that I, from the track record, the Clippers now are looking at this like, oh, our season is over. Because they've been here before. Two times already this year alone. And it's crazy how it kind of changed because last year they were like up 3-1 and then they fumbled the bag. Now they're about their team that back against the wall. We're better. I remember when they were down 0-2 against the, the Dallas Mavericks, Tyron Lue came to the podium like, oh, we got the advantage now that we have to go into their home. I was like, what? <laughs> you saying the home court advantage ain't a thing? I guess to them it's not. Um, so, wow. Mikael Bridges did not have a good shooting game, but that last shot looked beautiful. I even thought maybe he got fouled by Reggie Jackson, whatever. They ended up winning this game. Um, what a game. What an absolute game. I'm sorry there's no extreme analysis with it. It's just an exciting, exciting playoff game. Other than the fact, other than the fact that this game took 33 minutes for the last two. And my favorite part about this entire game, my favorite thing about this entire game, post-game interview, DeAndre Aiden, of course, gets it. He just had the game winning, game winning dunk, right? They asked him, What 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 do you think Chris Paul would say to you if he was here right now? And he was like, um, Whatever, he he was just so ready to not curse on television. And I have to remind myself that these these are kids, basically. DeAndre Aiden's, what, 21? How is DeAndre Aiden? DeAndre Aiden is younger than me, which is crazy to even say. DeAndre Aiden is 22 years old, about to be 23 in a, in a month or so. He said, like, good freaking job instead of the actual word. Or, or, and I'm like, oh, yeah. He knows that he's on TV. He's not letting the emotions or the adrenaline get him to forget that he's on television. It's great, right? All right, that's all. Bye.